there, it's Lara here. This time not with Witchy Wednesday, but with a different kind of video for you. Um, this is a message to anybody who is on some kind of healing journey, whether that be you have just embarked on this kind of journey, you're just coming to a place where you feel like you might need some support, um, or you've been you know, on this path for some time, or you are a person who is engaged in some kind of healing work and uh, you, you consider yourself a healer, right? On some level. Truthfully, I, I don't even love that word because it implies that it's one-sided situation and that the person who is the uh, healer, practitioner, um, whatever, you know, doctor, whatever it is, a spiritual teacher is the one with all the power and um, with some secret, you know, kind of thing, secret magic or skills or, or whatever. And that's not what healing is about. Healing is a two way street. And, and so ultimately giving our power away completely to another person and expecting that that's going to be the magic bullet is not to our, to our benefit in the end. Right. And um, you can be a bit, it can be even, it's a strong word, but it can, it can be damaging. It can be dangerous if, if we do that as well. Um, so this is, it's December 6, 2018, as I record this video. And I'm doing this, be, you know, right now because, for a few reasons, but I've, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious that we've reached a point where many of us are, are on some kind of healing journey or in need of some kind of support for our own healing. 2018 has been a triggery year for many people. Um, and we may have come to a point by choice or by circumstance or, you know, whatever that where we've, we know something's got to give, right? And we need to get some, some support and some help. Um, and that's okay. Like everybody needs that sometimes. Lots of us don't acknowledge that we do. And we re kind of refuse to, to admit that we might need some kind of support, but, um, you know, everybody needs that sometimes. And there's, there is absolutely no shame in seeking help and support, um, through your process. And so, um, I just thought it would be a good good time as we're closing out the year here and moving towards 2019 for this message. And that's not to say, I mean, you could be, I don't know when you're going to listen to this. It's it's always relevant and valid information, right? It's, it doesn't have a time stamp on it. So, and I, the other thing I want to say before I go any further is take what resonates, leave the rest, right? Again, you are your own authority. So, and that's my biggest message here overall. You know, if something that I say doesn't resonate with you, then leave it. It's not the message for you right now. Or if it's triggering you, you might want to look at why that might be, right? As well, because usually there's something to that when we are triggered by something. And it's something that is trying to get our attention and go, look over here. You, you want to look a little bit closer at this, even though it may not be super comfortable to do that. But um, so... You know, when we embark on a journey of healing, it can be difficult to know where to look, who to go to, what to do, what's going to help us, right? I mean, some things are pretty obvious. You break your leg, you know, you, you go to the, to the doctor or the surgeon. Um, but then there's all kinds of other stuff associated with that. You may have some some psychological wounding over that or even some spiritual wounding that is connected with that because you've been, you know, had to be off work. You've have, you know, there's all kinds of implications. Like I said, these things don't happen in isolation, right? There's always some kind of trickle down effect. It, it's a system, our being. So, um, but there are certain things that are a little more obvious than others, right? You, your tooth breaks off, you go to the dentist. Um, but sometimes when the healing that we need is more of a, um, it's more elusive. It's not the kind of healing that you can physically see. 
Um, this can be a little bit, these waters can be a, a little more murky and difficult to navigate, right? So we can be wondering what's, what do we do? Where do we go? Am I the only one who's experiencing this? No is the answer to that. I can guarantee you. Um, and so you just need to start kind of doing some exploring, see what you're called to. Are, are there certain people, certain uh, healing modalities that are drawing your attention? And all kinds of things can be healing. The list is long, 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 right? There are, there are, you know, it runs the gamut and I'll just rhyme off a few, but this is by no means an exhaustive list, right? We're talking about things like traditional um, psychotherapy. We're talking about, you know, energy healing, uh, Reiki, um, yoga, um, mindfulness practice, um, osteopathy, chiropractic, massage therapy, um, crystal healing, you know, going to a psychic or, or medium, um, astrology, um, shamanic healing, uh, you know, ayahuasca journeying. Like there's so many, so many, so many things that I could mention. Right. And if, if I didn't say your your thing on the list. I'm sorry, but that's just kind of what came to mind. So um, there's lots out there to choose from and it can get overwhelming. So, you know, take a look around, try some things, see what resonates with you and ultimately walk away from anything that doesn't feel right or any individual or group that doesn't feel right, that doesn't resonate with you. That is a clear sign from your intuition, from your um, inner guidance system, your higher power, your whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, um, that this is not the, the person or the place or the thing for you right now and maybe ever. Maybe it will be at some point, but right now it's not. So, you know, and then, if you decide to embark down a certain road, right? So I'm going to use the example of sort of traditional psychotherapy here um, because it's easy to speak to and I can speak to my own experience. I've done many different healing modalities over the years. Um, tried them myself, been trained in some myself. Um, you know, some I found very beneficial, others not so much. Some are practices that I go back to repeatedly and some I've never gone back to and you know so my point what I was saying is to circle back you know you you decide to go down a certain road you're going to try and I'm using the example here of, of traditional psychotherapy oftentimes <clears throat> that's something depending where you live um, but it might be covered at least in part by your insurance right and so oftentimes, you know, people choose to do whatever it is because their insurance through work, their employee assistance plan, whatever, will pay for it. It's really unfortunate, I feel like, that we are held over a barrel like that because there are many, most of the practices, most of the people I've seen, um, the professionals or, you know, whatever, over the years that I've engaged in or been connected with, um, that have helped me the most are not, were not something that was done through the traditional means of going through my insurance company and, and, you know, that kind of thing. So it's kind of a shame that it's, it's a very narrow <clears throat> window there. Maybe that'll change over time. I can only hope, but, um, so, but let's just say that you've chosen psychotherapy as, you know, your first kind of approach to, to dealing with whatever you feel you need help with and you go to a certain therapist because they were recommended to you by your family doctor or you were referred to them by your family doctor um, or other people you know have gone to them and have said that they've been you know supportive or you know this person has written a book or they went to some, you know, certain school or they have certain credentials, you know, and so they're supposed to be the bomb kind of thing. Um, and then you go and, you know, 
you're sitting through the first appointment and the whole time your inner guidance system is kind of throwing up red flags and going, no, no, this isn't, you know, there's something prickly about this that just doesn't feel right. Well, don't keep subjecting yourself to that. You know, like you're your own authority. If, if that is not the person for you right now, go find somebody else who is. It doesn't mean psychotherapy is not the thing for you. It just maybe that person is not the right person for you. Maybe they're the right person for somebody else, but maybe they're not the right person for you, right? In my own experience, I've had, um, you know, a handful of therapists over, over 20 years or so. Um, so I think since my early 30s were, was the first time that I, that I um, tried therapy, chose to do therapy. Um, well, there was one, one fam family uh, therapy session prior to that, I think in my late twenties, but that's uh, a video for another day <laughs> anyway. Um, but so when I did my own individual therapy, um, we, you know, I, I just, I had some people where I would have one appointment or two appointments with, and I was getting those red flags and I was just like, it's not working for me. This is not helpful. And that could have been because, you know, variety of reasons that person didn't have a lot of experience dealing with whatever I was bringing to the table. Perhaps they had their own baggage that they had not worked through um, or stuff going on in their own life that they were focused on. So they were not fully present. Um, maybe they were just done with their job. Right. And they didn't wasn't really something that was that they were really passionate about. And there was just work to pay the bills kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, whatever the reason, it just wasn't working for me. So I walked away from those situations, but I did not give up and I sought out other people. Um, and the two very, you know, the two best therapists I've ever had in my entire life. And when I say best, I mean, for me, right. Most helpful for me. Um, one was sort of happenstance and um, somebody that I just happened to to be connected with through uh, a plan. And then the other one, who's my current therapist that I've had for a couple of years, you know, I sought out myself and it's the best money I've ever spent. Not something um, that's covered. He's in Europe. So our, our appointments are actually via Skype. And that's the other thing I want to say that it doesn't have to be somebody you see face to face when, when you're talking about, you know, certain kinds of healing. I mean, some things are hands on, so that's different, but it doesn't have to be somebody face to face. It could be via Skype, via phone, you know, whatever. Um, so that just kind of depends on you and what feels right for you. So, you know, and the other thing is, and I, I sort of started to talk about this a little bit already, but just because everybody else is doing it, or it's all the rage right now, or, um, you know, it's what your insurance company will pay for, or again, somebody's written a book or somebody has a million Instagram followers, some spiritual guru or, you know, whatever, um, that doesn't mean jack if it doesn't help you and it doesn't resonate with you right so just because i mean this happens all the time in, in like the wellness the diet and health industry right um somebody wrote a book on the latest research or you know latest kind of diet fad um and everybody jumps on the bandwagon this you know the person's on every talk show and every magazine there's websites there's support groups popping up and products popping up all over the place um and so we feel many of us that this must be the magic bullet and so we're going to jump on that bandwagon without even giving it a thought as to does this make sense for me does this resonate with me does this feel right you know um and when it doesn't work we blame ourselves so, and that's not to say that some of those things don't work for some people. Like they do. I know I've had success with certain things and, you know, I know many other people who have too, but my point is, you know, there's no magic bullet, first of all. 
And that just because something is popular, recommended, um, available easily, you know, uh, it doesn't mean it's the right thing for you, right? Like, uh, I'll give another example. You, you hear a lot of talk these days about uh, ayahuasca and ayahuasca journeying. And um, I know many people who have done this kind of journeying themselves, and it's been really helpful for them. And there's a lot of very valid or valid, um, solid research coming out about the use of psychedelics, you know, like ayahuasca and others in the treatment of trauma and uh, mental illness, you know, that kind of thing. But that doesn't mean everybody should go on an ayahuasca journey. You know, it's not something that resonates with me personally, not something I've feel at all called to do despite the fact that I know other people who have had great success with it and so that's not something I choose to do regardless of what other people's experience has been or with you know what the, the stuff on the internet says whatever because it's just not the direction that my own guidance which is really your soul speaking to you, right? Um, is telling me I need to go in personally. So, and that may be different for you. And that's the point, right? Be discerning, make your own choices. Don't give your power away. So, um, and, you know, also because something has worked for you, that's fantastic. But two things. One is it doesn't mean it's always going to be the thing. You may, like I do different practices at different times. Things ebb and flow. Um, you know, sometimes I'm really into one thing and then I feel like I've reached a plateau and that's not what I need to be doing right now and I need to do something else. Or I need to just take a step back, whatever. Um, so, you know, that's okay too. And that That's perfectly normal and okay. And, um, the other thing is, is just because something has worked for you doesn't mean it's your job to shove it down everyone else's throat, right? Um, should you share that? Absolutely. I mean, a case in point, okay. Astrology has been one of the most effective and impactful healing modalities and in to me the way I use it the way I understand it um, the way I've been taught it it is a healing modality that's what it is um, th that I have ever encountered and I've been down many roads and that's why I share it that's why I'm obsessed with it frankly and uh, you know I, I but I don't you know, go to an, a party or an event and start shoving it down everybody's throat. Like if people ask me questions, I'm happy to share. I sometimes wish they would ask me questions because I like talking about it, you know, but, um, and I do engage in certain groups and things like that where people have common interests. You know, part of the reason I put my YouTube videos out is, I mean, I'm passionate about it. I love it. I want to share it. And I feel like the people who are interested and who resonate with my message will find me, right? Um, and so, but I don't go, you know, this is the only way. This is, uh, you know, if you're doing anything else, you're wrong. Uh, you have to believe this, you know, whatever. That's your choice, ultimately. So, um, so there's that, right? Like, you can certainly share what's working with for you or what's worked for you or people you know but it doesn't mean it's the magic bullet for everybody so so that's important to realize and then the last thing I kind of want to say here is really a message to anybody who is engaging in the healing work themselves right um, it is so so important to have integrity in your practice whatever it is that you do. My experience has been that there are people who are engaged in, in healing work, whether it be traditional, you know, whether it be like, you know, med traditional medicine or any number of other alternatives, um, that 
they are not present and aware of the impact that their words and their messages and their energy presence has on the person or people on the other end. Um, and that is terrifying to me because when, you know, people's wellness, their mental, physical, spiritual, emotional health is not something to be taken lightly. It's not something to mess around with. You know, I, I've seen, for example, I'll just throw it out there, like uh, people do tarot readings, which, you know, you may think that that's a silly woo-woo thing, but somebody is going to a tarot reader because they are seeking some kind of answers. They are in a vulnerable place clearly in some way shape or form maybe they're just curious but for the most part they're seeking some kind of answers or guidance right and so how can you treat that like it's no big deal and it's just like a parlor trick or it doesn't really matter what you say or you say things that can have profound and lasting impact on that person without even thinking twice about it um you know if if you go into a situation where somebody does that to you run the other way please like that person should not even be doing what they're doing um they clearly have not done their own work and you know it's so important as somebody who engages in any kind of healing practice to do your own work and continue to do your own work it's never really done there may be ebbs and flows times when you need things more than others but you know the best healer is a healer. And again, you know, I use that term healer, keeping in mind it's a two-way street, who is willing to do their own work and realizes, is aware of their own biases and baggage and um, trauma and all of that stuff, right? So that's really, really, really important. Um, and so, you know, if you are somebody who does healing work yourself, then I, I really hope that you take good care of yourself and that you are you realize that you are in a sacred contract with that other person or people on the receiving end of whatever it is that you offer. So, you know, I think that's pretty much all that I want to say. And I hope that this has been food for thought for you. And that it's been, you know, something that maybe has encouraged you to explore a little to think about your own healing journey or your own healing practice and the importance of it because it really is the most important journey any of us will ever take, right? Um, and so I think it's, it's so, so... It's just vitally important to be aware of these things, to be discerning, to not give your power away, to have integrity in your practice and to trust your inner guidance system. So with that, I will say goodbye for now and I will catch you in another video. Okay. If you are interested in the kind of, of work that I do, then please, um, you can check out my website at the link below and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.